In this lesson, we are going to talk about displacement, but before that, we will briefly talk about uh, these little guys here. So these little gizmos, and uh, those actually provide us with the option to load a texture, which will then be used instead of, uh, in this case, color. So you can substitute numerical value with the information from texture for every single guy that has this little gizmo. So our grid material, which is actually just a simple image. And uh, here we have some simple controls for tiling and offset. Uh, we can saturate or desaturate the image at a little bit of contrast, brightness, or limit the RGB values. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's close this. Now, since displacement is all about displacing the surface, the real geometry of an object with a material, let's actually create a new one, which we will use as a testing ground, and uh, we will give it some happy color. Maybe this one, and uh, you see in this case, uh, I really don't have to use the derivative color here in Reflectance 90, because the roughness is really high, and uh, I will leave it at that. In Maxwell, there are a couple of ways you can add irregularities to your surface, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you are acquainted with the idea of bump map. And uh, in case of Maxwell, we actually have a little bit more in terms of uh, bump map itself. So if I click on this little guy, then I will get this uh, texture window, so I can freely load any image that I want to use as a bump map for my material. So let's uh, load something and uh, I will load something from this uh, Maxwell Textures folder so that way you can uh, test things out and um, let's actually use this simplest of them all, this checker pattern and uh, once loaded simply hit close and you will see you receive a irregularity on your material. Now let's actually apply this to our preview and if you want to see that map in the viewport as a preview you have to instruct Maxwell which image it should use for preview because you can have a bunch of images loaded so here under this guy you can do that so I will instruct it to use checker and we'll close this and sometimes it doesn't refresh instantly but uh, if you refresh the scene manually or select another object, it will simply refresh. Now let me just right click on that material and do a fit to object and uh, maybe I will tile this a little bit, so maybe it's a little bit uh, better and uh, let's try this seamless, it will be maybe a little bit more obvious that it is a checkerboard pattern. Now as you noticed, all these commands are available for Maxwell material also, so integration is really, really good. Now let's enable our fire preview and uh, see what we have. And uh, obviously we have uh, some sort of a surface irregularity and uh, we can even increase the strength of this bump map to maximum. So 100 is a maximum value. So let's refresh this and see what we have. And uh, using a bump map is okay when you have a surface that you want to, let's say in a lack of a better term, displace mildly or use where surface has a very low variation where you really don't have large distances covered. Okay, I really hope that makes sense. So for example, bump maps are very useful when you are creating some floor tiles or, or balls or something like that. But uh, what if you need more? And actually, bump map doesn't displace any geometry. Let me show you something. And we will use our doodle tool. Now, bump maps don't really displace the geometry. So I'm really eyeballing this. They don't lift or push the geometry inwards. It's really everything in optical illusion. Now, 
that is a slightly better version of a bump map and those guys are this uh, violet tinted images and those are normal maps so let's for example load a normal map maybe this one and the normal maps inside maxwell are loaded also in bump channel but you have to enable this normal mapping so as you can see we have uh, surface deformations here now normal map is uh, simply a better version of bump map but it also doesn't displace the surface so there is no actual deformation going on it is all optical illusion okay i really hope that makes sense let's get uh, rid of that completely and we are left with our simple green material and uh, as you can see the texture didn't refresh so you can either select the object or another object or do any other command and it will refresh now the advantage of both bump map and normal map is that they render really fast and they have practically insignificant impact on render times where opposed to this displacement which impacts render time greatly now let me show you why is it impacting the render time significantly so once again magic tool tool and that reason is that displacement actually moves the points on the surface in all directions described by that map one other thing that it does if it doesn't have enough information it subdivides so it actually adds more geometry okay i really hope that makes sense so it's subdividing and making the object more dense so it can show more realistic results from the image map that is used as a source of uh, displacement now this really sounds complicated but uh, actually it is really simple so let me show you so let's uh, open that material and uh, first thing that uh, you would probably want to do with this uh, displacement is to change this to pre-tessellated okay it's much faster and it means that the object will be subdivided prior to rendering and uh, i'm pretty sure that doesn't mean much at this moment but um, let's load that same checkerboard pattern like this and uh, as you can see it's uh, rendering much slower now this subdivision is the first thing you want to lower all the way to let's say one and if you are asking yourself why that is because you want to use the lowest number here as possible this is the number of how many times this object will be subdivided so how does maxwell know how it will displace this object according to this texture well think of it this way black means stay at your original position white means move all the way to this value here okay so currently maximum height that our displacement will reach is two percent and it means two percent of the object's thickness okay that is really important you can also use a real life unit like centimeter but uh, this works pretty well so you can define the percentage of the complete thickness which will be used as a range for displacing so let me go a little bit overboard here so this guy relatively speaking is now two percent okay it obviously isn't but uh, i really want to illustrate it now this position here is black let's actually close this this is black and this full displacement so here is the white part in the texture then that guy will displace all the way to here so white okay i really hope that makes sense because it will help you a lot in understanding 
displacement. So black is no displacement, white is full displacement. And let's uh, get rid of this. So let's test this out. Let's uh, let's first enable our checkerboard preview. So if I select an object, so if we are correct, well, then this guy here should be fully displaced. This guy should stay at zero and uh, this guy should be fully displaced and so on and so forth. Now let's test it out by hitting F and simply refreshing the scene now. As you can see, that is obviously the case, but uh, we don't have enough subdivisions so that these little checkerboard patterns can be showed properly. So in other words, we don't have enough geometry. Okay, so let's stop this. And uh, we have to increase this subdivision value. Now, when you have initially dense object like this, I strongly encourage you to use minimal increment. So let's go with two. And you see the preview is now better. Let's once again refresh this and notice that by adding subdivisions, you are greatly increasing the render time and the preparation time. Things are better, but uh, still not good enough. Okay, let's uh, stop this. Now it's obvious that we have to have more subdivisions. So really go easy on this subdivision guy. It can crash your system. So let's go with four. And uh, let's refresh this. And you can see it takes a lot more time for subdividing that object and starting the render itself. Okay, and it uh, looks much better. So I'm pretty sure that you understand the concept behind this. So actually, I will subdivide this a little bit more. So maybe 10, like this. And uh, let me do a production render and I will be right back. And here we are. And as you can see, this placement is really awesome and does a fantastic job. Now, I noticed that uh, here, I hope you can really see that things are still a little bit rough. And uh, that suggests that we should have used even higher subdivision level and the default value is 16 so as you can see it really doesn't look like it takes a long to render and that is in this case because we are using this pre-tessellated solution now that means as said earlier that it will first subdivide the object more and then render but uh, there are also a couple of different ways of uh, subdivision and they pretty much produce the same results and, uh, and these guys here are really related to vector displacement maps which uh, we won't talk about this lesson and this on the fly means that it will displace as it renders so it will start displacing with the first sampling level so let me show you that it will be much slower so you see it's really displacing as it goes and uh, it's much much slower this way so i strongly suggest that you hold on to this uh, pre-tessellated before you explore other possibilities now i can even show you how that works with the preview render and it will immediately start uh, rendering practically speaking, but with every iteration, with every sampling level, it will do that uh, displacement. Okay, I really hope that makes sense and uh, let's stop this and uh, I hope that you now have a good insight in surface deformation abilities of uh, Maxwell material. So let's briefly sum it up. So bump is the fastest but it is also used only for slight irregularities such as uh, floors or tiles or 
noise on the walls and uh, stuff like that. Normal map is a little bit better version of Bump, relatively speaking, and uh, it offers a little bit more details and it's uh, a little bit slower than Bump. So let's say that this is a medium speed. And then there is displacement. Okay. It is the slowest, but the results which you can get, and it actually displaces the surface, are absolutely magnificent. You can do wonders with the displacement, and it can truly make your images to be amazing. Okay, I really hope uh, that you have a decent grasp on these uh, three ways to deform your surfaces. And in the next lesson, we are going to talk about uh, one absolutely fantastic and unique features to Maxwell Render, and that is multi-light.